We can make a whole hive now. I mean, that's not even a joke, it's just a statement of fact. Hey! What's up, my people? Zemgo here, the freaking geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the Transformers Rise of the Beast Deluxe Class Bumblebee. So here we are, and there he is, and first and foremost, as always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging. Again, this is part of that Jungle Mission 3 pack, also part of the buzzworthy Bumblebee line, Bumblebee Eraser, Mirage, all that good stuff. There's Bumblebee because Transformers, on this side we have Bumblebee, on this side we have the characters. We've seen this box already, but I'll just go through it real quick. Things, stuff, stuff, things, barcodes, obligatory product shots, that's basically it for... Of the packaging. Then moving right along, here we have the mainline Bumblebee from Transformers Rise of the Beast. And here he is in his robot mode. He is packed in robot mode. Let's get in close here so we can take a look not at his abs, but at the noggin. Oh, there's a noggin. You focus on the noggin. There it is. Yeah, it's, it's a nice head sculpt. Unfortunately, not as much paint as one would like. This right here is one of my main gripes about this figure. Um, you have some silver there on the face. Nice blue for the eyes, but unfortunately, that is it as far as paint goes. He does have... The back of his head is done in transclear and plastic, but then his eyes are painted, so kind of renders any kind of light piping pretty much null and void, unless you have like a really bright light just right up against the back of his head. Um, so, you know things, stuff that was done because reasons. Uh, you got the chest here with some silver. The headlights are picked out in blue. Autobot symbol front and center. Again, you got a little bit of silver going on there. And of course, as always, you're going to have some uh, different shades of yellow because you have yellow paint, yellow plastic. It's never going to match, but it is what it is. And you got some bits of silver there on the shins. His big old bumble boots. I love his bumble boots. And move up the back, you just got, you know, some folded up card back there. The wheels, you can see the uh, the door wings done all in transclear and plastic and then painted over in the yellow. And you can see how all that is working out, but yeah. There you have that. Now articulation wise, what have we got? Well, his head is on a ball joint. You get a little bit of wiggle waggle. Not too much up and down. Head can rotate, but not too far pretty much all you're getting there. Uh, shoulders on a ball joint, they can do a full 360. You just have to kind of get around the wings, but they can do a full 360. Can move in and out. And I can move up and down some for transformation if you need to. You have rotation right at the elbow. Uh, slightly under 90 degrees of bend at the elbow. You have wrist rotation here on the left hand. The right hand does not because there's a gimmick there. Uh, we'll get to that a little bit later. We do have waist rotation. Legs can go forward that far. You can do the big old bumble boots. Back about that far. Outward that far. You got thigh rotation in there. You get... How much bend? Yeah, you get 90 degrees of bend there at the knee. And as far as feet go, they can move up, they can move down, and you have lots of ankle tiltage. Now, as far as accessories go, um, we get the uh, little cage here for the front windshield. Now, what you can do with this is you can tab this onto his forearm and uh, do that. That's a thing you can do if you want to do it. I don't know. You can Bumblebee can use it to, you know, body check some Decepticons. I don't know. It's a, it's a thing. It's a thing you can do if you want to do it. And you also get some uh, some Bumble Blades. Little Bumble Shanks going on here. And these actually make up the front bumper of the car. I actually think this is pretty clever how they did this. You can see it just cast in a dark gray. And, of course, you can plug these into his hands, thusly and thusly. And, you know, he can he can hold it, hold it, hold it. He can poke, poke, stab, stab, poke, poke, stab, stab, and all of that good stuff right there. But you can also take his right forearm here, and if you pull this out, you can rotate this around, and you have his bumble cannon. And you got that going on there. And another issue I have with this figure is that his upper body doesn't like to stay tabbed in. So, yeah. Definitely, the, this figure is definitely not without its issues, but, you know, it's, it's, it's things. It's things and stuff. And I'm sure you're wondering, is the Bumble Cannon Bloosh compatible? Is it? Is it? Is it? You know what? I actually haven't thought to try until right now. Oh, it is! Look at that. It is! And now we can do a big old Bumble... Bloosh! 
Oh, it's that bumble bloosh. So there you have that, and now for comparison. Here he is with RC, with his uh, boxmate Mirage, with the mainline Prime. And you can see how that works out. With the Studio Series, it just keeps getting taller. There you go. Oh, also with wheel with wheeljack and with the scourgiest of scourges. And lastly, but not leastly, here he is with the Studio Series Bumblebee. So you can see how that works out. And as you can see, the mainline version is a bit taller, but the Studio Series version is definitely the superior version. Now the mainline Bumblebee, it's it's a serviceable Bumblebee. It does the job, but if you have the choice between this and the Studio Series, I would say go Studio Series. But as always, to each their own. Now as far as issues I have with the figure, uh, first and foremost, some more paint definitely would have been greatly appreciated. I say that a lot, but as I always say, I'll stop saying it when it stops being true. So, you know, it's just it's just the case. Some more paint would definitely have been greatly appreciated. Um, and also, he does have kind of a problem holding together, like the chest piece. It holds together well enough, but sometimes if you start moving around too much, like this chest piece can come untabbed. Uh, my biggest gripe with this figure is his head, the panel his head is sitting on, it doesn't tab into anything, it's just there, it's just there, and it just, it's just, you know, it's just, it's just there. And the thing is, too, is, like, all this is connected, like, this, this panel here is connected to this hinge, which is connected to this little back piece with the wheels and all this. So, if you move this around, this moves around with it, and you want to, you know, ideally you kind of want to have the wings, the door wings kind of angled back a little bit more, but when you do that, then they kind of bump into this back piece, which in turn will then pop his head up. So it's like, I want to angle his wings back, and then, you know, it either pops this up, or it'll pop his head, his head up. So that gets kind of annoying, so you have to kind of leave the wings a little bit more out, so his head will stay down. Um, so yeah, that's annoying. Just this having somewhere to actually... Just like a thoop point, just some place for it to thoop or, you know, something would have been nice instead of that. Just that's that's my biggest gripe with this figure is just that. Really. Everything else you can kind of manage, but this there's really nothing you can do about. It's just it's just the way it is, unfortunately. But meh, 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 meh. That's my professional opinion. But that is basically it for the robot mode, so let's get down to transformation, shall we? Let's now, bear in mind, these pieces you can actually leave in their place where they go in uh, in the alt mode, but just for the sake of just doing it the way the instructions tell you to do it, we're just going to leave these off for now. But you can leave these attached the way they are. It's only up to you what you want to do there. But what we're going to do first is we're going to take these wheels, we're going to bring them out, and then we're going to take this assembly and just bring it up over his head like so. And then we're going to take this chest section and untab it and bring it up. At this point now, we can rotate the waist 180. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the arms and we're going to bring them in, rotate the shoulder, and just kind of angle it down. Those will find their final resting place, resting place in a little bit. I know words, I swear. So just do something with the other arm, just bring it in, rotate that shoulder down, and just leave all that hanging out like so. You're going to come back here and just extend all of this on this double hinge. Like that. Make sure these wheels are out. And now we can drop this entire hood assembly down and straighten all that out. It helps if you bring those doors back because that will give you your clearance for all that to drop down. And that will sit there like that for now. Next, you want to take his feet and just rock them up. Now, his entire lower body is on a double hinge, so you want to shift it up and his head will tab in right there, like so. And now you want to take the legs, and there's a tab slot connection right there. There's the tab, and the slot's right there. So you just bring that up, drop that into place, drop that into place, like so. Once that is done, you're going to tab the forearms into the hips. There's a tab slot connection right there, so just line that up, and just tab that in. And tab that in, like that. 
And I'll just kind of help straighten everything out. And at this point now, we can close the doors. There is a little tab slot connection right there in the side of the hip. So just line that up and get that in. Line that up and get that plugged in. And get everything lined up as best you can. And then the last thing you're doing is just taking these wheels, bringing them down, and they will tab right into the side of the shoulder. So again, you may have to adjust the angle of the shoulder here so everything lines up as it should. There you go. And going your home, there is your home. You have found your home. Hooray for finding homes. And just kind of push that down, get everything nice and squozen. And there you go. There you have Bumblebee in his alt mode. You get a pretty good spin out of him. Pretty good spin out of him. So there he is in his alt mode. And yeah, it's serviceable. It's not fantastic, but it's serviceable. Um, you know, as you can see, I don't know how well this comes across on camera, but yeah, there's definitely <laughs> the different shades of yellow are just glaringly, just, just brutally obvious here. You can see all this is like a totally different shade of yellow than the rest of the car, because again, you have painted yellow and yellow plastic. So it's, it's, it's not going to match. It's just not. Anyway, let's get in close here so we can take a look at the details. Of course, you have that front bumper going on there. We'll add a little bit more to that in a bit. You got the black stripes going up the hood. You got the trans clearing windshield and windows. You got the big old wheels going on there. And more black going down the back. They did pick out the tail lights in red, which is nice. Even a little license plate they just painted there in white. Yeah, his feet are just hanging out the back. His toes are just there. Yeah, no. And his arms, you can see his arms, but granted you can see the arms on the Studio Series version as well because it, it works the same way on the Studio Series version. But yeah, there is the top, there is the bottom, you have visible a lot syndrome, and he does roll, as rolling things should, hooray, hooray for rolling. And of course we can attach all of these accessories as well, I'm going to do that now so we can finish off the look, so the uh, little cage here for the windshield, just plugs right in like so and then you take the uh, the bumble shanks here and they just interlock like that to make the front bumper and again i actually like how that works i think that's pretty cool and then that just plugs into the front and there we go there we have the full look there of bumblebee's alt mode from the movie and i like that yay so there you go and for comparison uh, here he is with rc with Mirage with Wheeljack with the Mainline Prime with the Studio Series Prime with Scourge and last but not least with the Studio Series Rise of the Beast Bumblebee. You can see how that works out. Now, again, they both have the arms kind of hanging out the bottom here. I mean, on the Studio Series version, they managed to tuck the feet away, which is nice. Um, you do have the mismatched yellow as well on this Bumblebee. It's just not as egregious because it's just this one little section right here around the front windshield. That's where the mismatched yellow is. And obviously here, there's a lot more transclear and plastic that they had to paint. This is basically where all the paint budget went, right here to this section, I'm guessing. But, you know, again... It is what it is, but there you go. So there you have Bumblebee, and uh, yeah, it's 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 an okay figure. I definitely have my issues with it. Um, as far as the robot mode goes, that panel that his head is on, just not securing to anything, and just kind of flopping around whenever you want to move him. It's it, that's very 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 annoying. Um, the chest the chest stays in fine, but again, that's something that can also come undone if you start to move him around too much. So again, things could have held together a bit more securely, or just held together at all. And as always, more paint, but that's just a given with <laughs> these figures nowadays. Transformation works fine. You can get from point A to point B with little to no effort. Um, the, you know, the vehicle mode, it looks okay. Again, just how much painted yellow is on it just makes this big, just giant patch of just oddly colored yellow amongst the the, uh, the yellow plastic. So you have that, you know, just a big mismatched colored look going on there, which doesn't look great. So still, you know, like I said earlier, it's a serviceable Bumblebee. It does the job, but as far as this three-pack goes in general, it's definitely the weakest figure of this three-pack. Air Razor, Mirage, 
those two figures pretty good. Bumblebee is definitely on the bottom of this list. So there you go. Now this three pack is a Target exclusive. So check your local Targets, check Target.com. And of course you can get Rise of the Beast figures from BigBadToyStore.com as always linked in the description down below. So you can check that out. You can also check out the Rise of the Beast playlist for any reviews you may have missed. Also linked in the description down below so you can check that out as well. And I think that's it. So don't forget to check out M Games. Check out Love, Peace, Paranormal. Follow me on Twitter. All of that good stuff down in the description below and i think that's pretty much all there is to say so there is the transformers rise of the beast of deluxe class bumblebee and this is mgo saying remember you don't stop playing because you grow old you grow old because you stop playing be geek be proud bomb in your face <laughs> Oh no! Bumblebee! My dear friend! Murdered! Oh, woe is me! Hey, maybe, maybe the Maximals can find a way to bring him back! Do we really, though? I mean, can't we just have a bumbleless world just for a little bit? You know, just, just to see what it feels like. Who knows? We may like it. Oh. Oh, you ain't right.